My name is Mike Hord. I'm with uh, R3. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'm panting because I just ran up the escalator, too. So. OK. So I was going to talk today about um, some work that Luxoft actually has done in um, partnership with ourselves and the Indie team. There we go. And in the remaining time I have left, I'll have to be pretty concise on this. So the aim here was, excuse me, to take the work that the Indie project has done around self-sovereign identity and allow Corda to actually work with that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, is everybody familiar with uh, the Indie project? Who's worked with the Indie project? Yeah, it's great to see. So, decentralized identity is a really promising area. And we've done a lot of work ourselves. R3 has ran a series of projects on this. <clears throat> There's competing technologies around how you would do it. And the great thing with the Indie project is, as an open source project, working with open standards, it's very easy to collaborate with them. So we've done a lot of work with the team there. If you're familiar with decentralized identity, I won't get too deep into this. Uh, I believe there's somebody from the Indie team who's going to attend. I'm not sure if they're here. But we can follow up afterwards, come by the booths. Uh, if you want to go deep into the Indie work, it'd be great to come by their booth also. Sorry, still, still panting. Seems to get worse, though, actually, as it goes. <laughs> so the way decentralized identities work is, and why a blockchain is actually good for this, if you think of verifiable claims, if you're familiar with that concept, it's really about taking a claim you have about yourself that's been issued about the authority of that claim, right? So that fact is, is presentable without the authority being present, which is very powerful, both from an individual or, or organizational perspective. And the challenge of this, however, is these claims in a digital form could be passed on. So one of the key challenges is, how do I create a set of claims that I can pass on while retaining the privacy? Uh, and that's a lot of what's happening on the Indie platform, is it creates these pairwise unique identifiers, as well as using encryption technology, so zero-knowledge proofs, to allow you to pass these claims, prove facts, but not have those traceable back to you as the person who's passing them along. So how would this work in Corda? Um, and I'll go back through this. So these are the credentials. So, and I'm going to skip over Indie, and I'll come back to it at the end of it. So the way Corda works then, and what the Luxoft team, who's up front here actually, by the way, so we have somebody from the Luxoft team, uh, what they've done for us is they've allowed you to use this verifiable claim-based infrastructure in the Corda framework. Uh, how many people are familiar with Corda? By, raise your hands. OK, so a good few of you. So Corda has um, one of the capabilities of Corda that's unique is it has a workflow engine. So uh, one of the things that we realized in developing the platform is one of the challenges in most of the blockchain platforms is how do you actually build a transaction? So it's not so much about submitting it for consensus to the ledger. It's more about building, obtaining the information, the signatures, et cetera, uh, in a way that you can have assurance over the validity of the transaction. Now, with this type of integration with Luxoft, what we're able to do is use that same infrastructure for building transactions to actually pass around the claims. So you can work with the Indie infrastructure creating unique pairwise identifiers, obtaining claims, and then passing those over to your counterparties while still staying true to the Indie mechanism. So what it allows you to do is build transactions that are quarter transactions. Uh, so they have all the characteristics of a quarter transaction, but also all the same characteristics that you would have of the Indie information. So as an example, if we were to do a transaction uh, around a, a digital DVP, so delivery versus payment, we can assure yourself of the exchange of those assets, the validity of the assets, and the uniqueness of those. But you can also include into that the unique identity characteristics. They'll have the same properties inside the transaction. So all the claims that are made about parties as a part of that transaction will become a part of the transaction, then stored on ledger, uh, and have all the same characteristics of any transaction. So it comes a very powerful way to integrate directly into the Indie network and the Indie technology, or the sovereign network and the Indie technology, uh, and then make that a native part of the Corda platform. So what the Luxoft team has done is created that set of flows and the Indie integration work. So how would you go about using it? Probably the simplest way is just at a high level. Uh, and these are Luxoft slides, so thank you to Luxoft for this. Uh, you can think of, on the one hand, you're working as a patient with a set of uh, issuers. So. Um, in the treatment center. So what you're doing as a patient is taking these claims from your insurer about what they're willing to pay for, providing them 
to the treatment centers so they have that assurance without having talked directly to the insurance company themselves. Now that information then can become a part of the transaction between the treatment center, a manufacturer, uh, and a courier and other parties. So that same information is, is used in the transaction without those parties being privy to the fact that who the patient is or what their identity characteristics are. Only the information they need to know about them, the claim they have around payment, is carried through that transaction. Now keep in mind here that the interesting part is this is a sovereign network interacting with a Corda network. So these are two different blockchain technologies uh, working very naturally together. So, um, so let me go back a little bit. So let me pause there. Are there any questions? Now that I have my breath back. <laughs> so I know this is a 10 minute session, so I had to be kind of crisp on this. Um, and it, I'll continue on this, but I would say, in case I run out of time already, uh, the call to action on this, we're in the quarter booth, we'd love to take you a bit more through this and how it's been integrated. Uh, and what, what I think we can do is have the Luxoft guys be present over there, which would be fantastic. And um, they can talk about that work. Uh, on the indie side, uh, the indie team is directly across from us. So um, they are obviously happy to talk about how indie and the verifiable claims infrastructure works. Um, the one thing I would point out is uh, all of this work has been donated by the Luxoft team. Um, to the Indy project. So it's a lab today, and one of the things we're looking at is, uh, and I just talked to the Indy team about this today, is can we elevate this actually to be a component of the Indy distribution itself? So that, that integration comes out of the box, which would be fantastic. So, so any questions on that? Very succinct presentation. <laughs> So I think uh, much of this is, is going through how uh, Indy works, in fact, and how Indy is able to separate out the issuers and the verifiers uh, so that this, um, the trust is, ret is retained while retaining privacy. And in our previous work on verifiable claims, uh, we've run a couple of projects on this um, it, alongside regulators, actually. The interesting part of the outcome of the uh, projects is the regulators view this technology is actually being something that's akin to a physical wallet today. So that's one of the regulators we worked with that was their, their perspective on it. Uh, so this is something that is very viable. Now the real challenge, of course, is actually not the technology, unfortunately. It's bringing on those issuers. So I think as a community, what we have to do then is once we've agreed on the standard and the technology, is to start working with the issuers one use case at a time. So it's really this bootstrapping of those issuers that is kind of the, the critical component of there. And less technology and probably more around the process and the motivations involved. So, uh, oops, I think this deck has timing and apologies. Um, and one of the challenges was with that, of course, if, if any of you all have worked with the organizations that are likely to issue these claims would be government organizations, as an example. Uh, they tend to be the organizations that you go in to do your own servicing, and they're running a Windows 95 machine. Uh, so the technology capacity doesn't always mo match to what their motivations would be. So, um, so that's all I have, actually. I'm happy to go through some more detail of this, but I was trying to keep it to 10 minutes, which feels quite strange. But that is a sh very short time slot, and there might be one coming after. But anybody have any questions on that? So uh, for Corda, by the way, we actually have, um, I know Corda is uh, a bit of an unusual technology, a little less known by people. If you do want to know more about Corda, come by the booth. But we also have a session that we're running uh, just across the street just to take people through uh, the technology. It's uh, a bit more immersive, and it's uh, from two developers, so it's more technical. So they can come by and grab a card. Uh, it has the times and the location. So it's the hotel literally just through the alleyway over here. So. Excellent. Well, thanks for your time, everybody. Apologies again for being late. Uh, I'll stay here if there's any questions. Uh, otherwise, please come by the booth. <laughs>